Things are getting tense for the UNSC in this week's episode of Halo the Series, and I get to break it all down with a pair of badass female Spartans, Kate Kennedy, who plays Kai125, and Christina Rodlow, aka Corporal Perez. We'll check out the new Spartan 3s and get a behind the scenes peek at the special effects that create Halo the Series visual looks. What's up, Spartans? I'm Sydney Goodman, and this is Halo the Series Declassified, the show where we dive into all things Halo the Series, and that means there will be spoilers aplenty. I don't want to ruin your day, so if you haven't seen this week's episode, make sure you stream Season 2, Episode 6 on Paramount+, Plus, and then join me back here so we can talk all about it. The Spartan 3 armor is just so cool. And how great to be able to talk to an actual Spartan 3, Corporal Perez herself, Christina Rodlow. Hi, Christina. Thank you so much for being here today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. What was it like to put the Spartan 3 armor on for the first time? Oh my God, it was such a huge process. I think it took us like two or three months oh, wow. to get suit ready. I had like so many fittings. And when we finally got the final suit, it was amazing. But at the same time, I was like, oh my God, this is so heavy. It's so heavy. You guys have no idea how heavy it is. So I got a, a little bit nervous about it. <laughs> I was like, how am I going to be able to do this? But thank God we, we got training and we have amazing people and our stunts are amazing too, and that helped a lot. But I was so, so excited when we finally got the, the final armor. Actually, we have your actual Spartan helmet right here. Oh, wow. <laughs> it seems like it'd be kind of hard to, to see out of. You cannot see anything, actually. It's really hard. But the good thing is we can take this out so you can breathe. Oh. But yeah. Okay. Perez is a new character this season. What can you tell us about who she is? She's a family girl. Her family is her everything. And when things start happening to her family, she gets lost a little bit because everything she thought she knew, it's gone. And she needs to find a different purpose in life. And... That's when she decides to become a Spartan. I think that's why she decides to become a Spartan, to find a reason, a purpose for living in this life without her family. Were there any sets that were your favorite to shoot at or maybe you found most inspiring? Oh my God, there were so many. I think my favorite, it was a location. Mm -hmm. On episode three, we go to a church. Mm -hmm. And this church, it was completely destroyed in the middle of nowhere. And it was just, the place was just amazing. And what they did with it, the whole atmosphere was was beautiful. And and I think that scene is beautiful too. And yeah. that one was my, my favorite. Yeah, oh, I love that. Christina, thank you so much for coming by Declassified and for chatting with me today. Thank you so much for having me. They're not chief. I can't make them Spartans. End simulation. Ackerson sees Kai initially as a potential leader, but it's his favorite kind of leader because it's the kind of leader that's easily led. So he sees an opportunity there for him to be a mentor and for her to trust in him and therefore he can kind of carry out his will through Kai. Master Chief is gone but you are making the next generation in his image. But I think he also enjoys having someone he can rely on. Now I'm going to tell you something, and this information is highly classified. Through the later half of the season, Kai really becomes the person closest to Akerson. He starts to show those cracks. The facade breaks a little. of the Spartan Threes, Kate Kennedy. Kate, welcome to Halo <laughs> Declassified. Thank you, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to jump into Kai's journey because I mean, she's had a huge season so far. 
So how do you feel about her growth as a character? Well, for one, she has grown out her pink hair. So that's yes. huge, huge news for season two. <laughs> but, um, she's kind of a completely different soldier this time round. I think season one, she was very toddler-esque, like getting to mm -hmm. terms with feeling emotions for the first time and, and whatnot. But this season, the overall overarching emotion that she's feeling is grief. And she kind of has to grow up ever so slightly and make some decisions for herself. Some huge moments for Kai this season. She's impulsive. And I think regardless of how much she's grown, she will still react often with anger <laughs> but, and, um, and violence. But um, she is able to really get to grips with what's important now at this stage of her life. And Kai interacts with a couple of the season's new characters. We see her with James Ackerson and Corporal Perez. So why don't you tell me a little bit about those relationships? Yeah, so Ackerson, Kai is incredibly skeptical of to start with because he is this new guy who has taken over. And I think for Kai, she really wants to bed into the institution and the bureaucracy that she's used to with her family members, her Spartan team. And so anyone new, she's just not, not partial to at all. Mm. But as you see, as the series goes on, he starts to speak more sense than the team around her. Then Perez, she and Kai are quite similar in a way. They've mm. both lost everything that they knew around them and they're very lone wolf characters at this, at this stage in the middle of the series particularly. So one of the best and most surprising moments of this week's episode was Kai's fight with Master Chief. Kate, things are a little awkward between uh, Kai and the Master Chief. How does Kai really feel about the Chief? It's such a huge scene, that one, because she realizes oh. halfway through that Chief is telling the truth and Chief is right, but she has to complete what she's set out to do. I think with this fight, if she could be fighting herself, she would. It just happens to be Chief. If you think the fight was intense, it only gets more and more intense. Um, the next two episodes are wild for Kai. She has everything at stake. Amazing. Well, Kate, thank you so much for coming by. This has been wonderful. <laughs> yeah, lovely to see you. Lovely to see you as well. Thank you. Thank you. You heard Christina Rodlow describe what it was like to wear and work in Spartan 3 armor. Now, let's take a look at what it took to make it. Meeting the Spartan 3s for the first time and instructing them. Spartans! Never the way! Yeah, that was pretty powerful. Spartans! Never the way! Got speed, Spartans. I think what appealed to, to Perez to, to join the Support in 3 program was it's the only thing she can do to help society. Perez! What the hell do you think you're doing? What it takes! Drag out! She has nothing left and she has nothing to lose. Phase one complete. Initiated phase two. Spartan in 3s were really more about mass production. A little less armored, typically recruited from young adulthood often children orphaned from the Covenant War. They're kind of cannon fodder. A lot of what they were sent in for were suicide missions. The idea of Spartan 3s is that there are just thousands and thousands of them. And so it's like the mass production of Spartans, conceptually. So the armor kind of had to look like that as well. First squad, on the beam! So the first thing was work out how it's actually going to function. So where all the bend points are, what all the proportions are, and then work out how we put it all together. And then I did my pencil sketch of how I saw the Under Armour would be. So we developed that into a concept art here. There's something like 159 pattern pieces that has to be cut individually because there's multiple layers to them. So that's the Under Armour. Do you think we have another piece of here? Let's have a look. One of the things that we spent the time on was the helmet and the design of the helmet and particularly the visor. Inside them, they have fans and they have lights, which are operated remotely. So they've got this technology inside them as well. 
So there's a lot going on in that helmet. Gordon! <laughs> this is Perez's armour. And you can see it's got Perez's name on it. There's lights here. There's some damage that we've applied here. You can get an idea of the underneath suit showing through, a little bit of this hexagonal print underneath, which you sort of see with movement. So you can sort of see how we have to build up the layers of them. So the action in this show is it's pretty full on. They have to stand a lot of stress. So the expectation I have upon a costume to perform is really high. Here's another special look at season two. <laughs> the famous Wobble Rick. <laughs> We're doing some visual effects work on this show that's never been attempted before. And just the opportunity to work with a couple of incredible devices with the VFX team and the stunts team into how we approach this. It's fly, it's fly away. <laughs> One is called a tuning fork, which we're using in space. We're gonna go down, up, and right. We're gonna start shooting, 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 pulling back the momentum. So we can go down, up, and hard roll. So it's all in one smooth motion. The other is called a wobble rig. The wobble rig was designed and built in order to carry the Perez character because she's a very small lady. And the idea was to put her on a, a rig that she could stand on in order to swing her around, so as if she was flying through space. So the idea was she stands on a ball that she supported, so she doesn't have to support herself or the camera. So basically, we move her. Uh, but as it turned out, it turned out that she actually was moving us. So she was really, really into it. Sigma camera. Fun stuff. <laughs> We're using to shoot inside the actors' helmets so we can get an emotional performance from them. Yeah, when you start to look around, it gets really interesting. Whenever I see that happening from the camera, I really get excited. <laughs> nice, very, very nice. just about does it for this week's edition of Halo the Series Declassified. A massive Spartan 3 thank you to Christina Rodlow and Kate Kennedy for hanging out with me today. Next week, I'm talking to Charlie Murphy, aka The Blessed One, and Jen Taylor, who plays the brilliant Cortana. And of course, don't think I'd leave without a taste of what's in store. Here's a special Declassified. See what I did there? preview of next week's episode of Halo the Series, which streams on Paramount+. Plus. See you soon. You can't break the covenant here. They control the Halo. They will annihilate humankind. That's the entire first fleet of Sodom Accord. This is unsound. How many Spartan 3s are you willing to sacrifice? First squad, on the beam. All of them. The Spartans are Parangoski's insurance policy. Her fail safe. Just get to the Halo. No matter what.